here at Tattoo Gardens, we get to break ground on the kitchen this spring, which is awesome. We spent a lot of time last autumn and winter working through formulas on making bricks that pass the tests to make solid walls because this this kitchen lounge area is going to be earthen walls and a living roof so the walls have to be solid enough solid enough to handle a lot of weight it's a neat spot here with a with an, a walk-in pantry like refrigerator underground over there um, up there on the bank about 30 steps up is going to be our quarry I'm not an architect or a civil engineer I've never made anything like this heck if I've ever been respected for anything in my life it was as a sailor the only commonality among sailors is you got a lot of time to ponder things and read so you know you read a lot of books about building with earth and most of them are made for written by people here or this part of the world or that part of the world and they talk about what works for them so one interesting read that I think is high value, awesome, from here is New Zealand has some standards books. You know, it's, it's interesting because none of us really likes being told what to do, but these code books, when you think about it, they're really written by a diversity of personalities and egos, and they're our neighbors and our friends, and they're really just trying to give us a good framework to build a structure that lasts 50 years through driving rain and shifting earth and earthquakes and you know it's it's not bad advice and it's, it's kind of generic so we're going to go through two tests that chalice has gone through and i have gone through to come up with a formula for making bricks and cob how we're going to end up making this so this video is going to be about how we came up with our earth mix for making an earth building first thing that crosses my mind is well it's we're on earth everything's earth when we die we go to earth after we poop it out it becomes earth so closeness proximity to the structure was a big thing so what we did is set up a quarry close maybe 30 steps or so from the kitchen up the hill because it's easier to drag material down than it is up and close after that it's worth thinking of like weight like low density and high density earth so um what we did is we set up like here's some jars that we set up um you mix mix some earth in water and let it like shake it around and let it sit for a little while these have only been sitting for a day but you might be able to see that it's different color on the bottom than the top the heavy stuff sinks to the bottom the light stuff goes to the top so more organic matter would be more like low density earth and rocks or silt or clay is going to be more heavy density so heavy density is better than low density so what we did for our quarry here the first off we cleared off the topsoil and so the topsoil is gone now we have more heavy density earth or like clay we got to experiment with our mix some findings after sand the sand comes from the beach around here and I'm leery about sand because sand it has maybe the right um, thickness you don't want too big a rocks or too small a rocks you become silt um, but sand has salt and salt you know asked after my time on the sea salt is dangerous because it's highly corrosive like we're going to use nails to hold the the um the door frames and the window frames in place and they're going to rust away faster it also is like it holds its moisture so anything made with a lot of salt is never really going to dry out completely and i'll bet you it reacts badly to cement or lime if you're going to use that in your mix for me to determine the ratio of clay to aggregate and sand i used a shot glass and soaked i um, dug a little hole and let the clay here off this bank soak i heard somebody say you should let it let it soak for 24 hours or so and then i took a shot 
take a shot of clay and one shot of finings Mix it up good so that there's no, all the clay is around the rocks. I remember another guy saying something like, think of it as the clay is the glue and the, and the rocks are the strength. So mix it so there's every little bit of, of aggregate or rock or granule of sand has a, a piece of wet clay is surrounded, you know, blanketed by a layer of wet clay. Because the clay shrinks, but the, the sand granule or the rock does not shrink when it dries out. So here we have one shot of clay to one shot of rock findings. And I make a ball. So you can, you have this little ball here and I just made it nice and round and set it down like this. So this is one to one and this is four to one. So what I did is made five or six balls from one to one to five to one findings. And I did it with findings, a bunch of balls from one to one to five or six to one. And then I did it with a bunch of sifted findings I did the same thing with the sand. So I ended up with like 15 or 18 balls, rows of balls, and let them dry out. Um, the sand is like twice as expensive with the risk of the salt. So I didn't want to use the sand. And then the, the, the sifted findings was just a lot more work. So I tried to find the least effort and the least cost because this pile of findings is only like $300 and a phone call away um, to make something that would pass the test. So after these balls were, you know, those just a couple samples, but after making a whole bunch of these balls and letting them dry out for a week or so, you can tell like this one, I could tell you, is going to start cracking. As it dries out, it's gonna start cracking and you know it's gonna be a, it's a bad formula. One to one is too much clay, it cracks when it dries. And then, this guy's here, it's, it's kind of like, um, what, ha what happens is almost like when you make chocolate chip cookies with too many chocolate chips, the chocolate chips don't, don't hold, so they just kind of crumble apart. So with too much, this one, this one might have passed the test of the ball, so I might have ended up making bricks. But if it started crumbling apart because there was too much aggregate and not enough clay, then I didn't bother making bricks to test with. So it ended up being in the middle of the, you know, three to four parts findings to one part clay before I put the effort into making the bricks. I, being me, got quite interested in um, cow manure. I don't even know where. I think it was actually t because online and following a few people and their plastering techniques and people who had made interior um, structures, interior um, sinks and basins with cob. And it's really amazing. It's very, very solid. It's incredibly, it feels really durable. Um, so that was where I decided I might try and see what that would look like in the cob structure. So I made a few different balls similar to him, but I also used the cow manure. So I decided to make another bowl because it was just there to play with, and a ball. So this bowl has um, the findings in it. So if I'm going to use the findings, I will definitely, um, for the interior sinks, I will definitely sift them because they're too big. So when you're burnishing the bowl, the um, little bits of rock actually stick up. The other thing also for interior basins and benches, I wouldn't um, use Kikuya, I'll probably use the Pampas 
flower tops because they're really really fine you can see here there's a there's a bit of um, kikuya that's just made its way to the surface so that actually over time won't be that awesome so the cow manure <laughs> this is um, probably the most unpleasant part of this job it's really and I'm just going to use my fingers and I'm sorry if I gross you out but this when it's in this consistency so fresh cow manure is really great because it's easy to work with it's like Ken explained with the clay the moisture content to get it right is really important because you want it to be easy to mix when cow manure has been in the sun for a little bit you can see it's quite nice there on the top but if you turn it around this bit's been on the sun now this is this is why cow manure is really awesome to use it gets really hard and waterproof but you don't really want too much of that in your mixture if possible because it's just a little bit harder to break down and it's a bit harder to mix in altogether I'm going to just take one part one handful of cow manure and one handful of clay And it is really um, fantastic soaking it because as I'm mixing it around I can feel the pieces of clay. Doing large amounts I have put them on the tarpaulin and mixed it, stamped it around with my feet and then used the tarpaulin to fold it over and be part of the mixing Right, and then actually that full of findings. Now I'm a more of a intuitive <laughs> ingredient person. Might just add in this one. Now with the fine with the straw you want to make sure that it's not too long that it needs to be half the width otherwise it can cut right through and obviously um, create weakness voila There you have it, there you have it. We have made some test bricks. So according to NZ standards, they have to cure for 28 days. I've read things like a month, but they have to be dry. And then we're gonna give them the drop test. So now we're gonna do a drop test. Let's kind of raise this. We've been with a fair bit of rain. So we've been drying out these guys under this little roof. They can be one to one, these are two to one. They can't be more um, rectangular than two to one. So these are like, um, what, 290 by 140 square. Let's get rid of this, this is the smaller cement mixer you can buy. 300 watts, it'll um, help us mix the mix them. So we have a little measuring thing here. I've read one guy saying, from drop this from your hip. Drop it from your hip. And if something breaks off that's bigger than your fist, then it fails the drop test. Um, and then the NZ standards, they're a bit more specific. They say drop it from 900 mil, which is about there, 
or about a yard and drop it on the corner like this and if anything breaks off that's bigger than a hundred mil then it fails so that guy failed good thing about this there's no cement or anything else so we can just toss it aside let's try another one the hard surface we're, we're dropping them onto some um, some other bricks which is on hard clay same thing about 900 mil this three to one has passed the drop test so I've only done one um, variety so I haven't got really anything else to test but one part um, one mixture and that mixture is one part clay one part finings and one part cow manure and I actually didn't use pampas grass I used kikuya so I used um, dried kikuya these are quite new so they've only they've just they've basically just met their 28 day waiting period so here is this is actually my dad's old measuring tape so ni 900 900 yep. okay so 900's here and we drop it at an angle like that so there so like there um, no, a two -sided end. okay so where your left hand left three fingers are that's where that's the okay problem. all right awesome so that one passed I like this method because we are using more of what's available here the only problem is that um, someone will be needing to collect a lot of um, cow manure but cow manure is amazing because it has an enzyme in it that keeps um, and it creates a continuing hardening of the materials this next test is not really a pass fail deal like the drop test was they call it the drip test so what you do basically it's a combination of drips on the brick for a period of time and we're in the bathroom here because it's the only place we've got that's out of the sun or the wind so you put like a, a rag or a, a towel or a sponge or something in a bowl of water and you let a hundred milliliters of water drip on a brick for between 20 and 60 minutes not more than 60 not less than 20 so it's timed and then you drip drop it 400 mil so we got 400 mil like that from the top of the brick I timed it already and it's kind of hard to get the drip to not go too fast and not go too slow we'll give it 50 and then another 50 A little bit more because I need time to put, set the brick up underneath it so the way you set the brick is at an angle like a two to one slope so this is the same kind of brick put there that's probably a little bit high so I'm going to move this back like that Okay, that's a good 400 mil. I put a little line in the bowl here so we know when the 100 mil has been dripped. We'll just come back in probably 30 minutes or so and see what it looks like. So now we're at 25 minutes later and the water's down to our little tape line there. So that means we've let 100 milliliters of water or about one and three quarter ounce of water drip. 400 
millimeters down onto this test brick at the 2 to 1 slope. So let's take it off and measure the depth. So for that we have our, our nail that they say it should be just over 3 millimeters wide. I cut it to a flat, flat point. We're at 11 millimeters. So this hole is 11 millimeters. So we use this hole for, to determine the erodibility index. This was, isn't really a pass-fail test like the drop test is, but that's not completely true. Because another part of this is if the water is penetrated more than 120 millimeters, it, it fails. So immediately after, they say immediately after this drop, we have to break it open and see if we have more than 120 mil of penetration. Pretty muddy. Oh, that's way, way under. That's probably because there's so much rock in there. That's looking at about 35 millimeters of penetration. Okay, so now we're going to try the drip test on another brick. Okay, 27 minutes later, the water's down to its mark in here. So we've got our 100 mils, which is dripped. Let's see, the, check the depth. That's eight millimeters. So we got an eight millimeter drip hole. Let's crack it open and check the um, water penetration. It's like max about 43 millimeters. So fail would be 120 mil. So yeah, 43 mil water penetration, 8 mil drip depth. And this was the brick that is one part clay three-part findings, um, rock quarry findings, and one part pampas grass. I thought I would do my brick. <laughs> Ken's already given you um, the specs. Actually, I'll leave that out here. So, yeah, I need to fill, put 100 mil in here. So I'm going to do that with this guy. Okay, so lean this guy up. 
Is that angle good? Yeah. Okay. That's good so that's good. So we'll see how this guy copes with the drip test as well. Right. Okay, so we um, we are at just over 100 mil by the looks of the line here in the little bowl. So now I'm going to take this brick and we need to measure the depth of um, of the hole. That's like four and a half. Yeah, that's awesome. Four and a half. Four and a half, six mil. Cool. Does it need to be more specific than that? Nope, that's awesome. Okay. So Let's see how it looks when you bust it in half. Okay. How far did the water go down? But definitely looks like the cow poo brick outperforms. Yes. The, um, so what does the rock that say? brick? Um, actually, it only looks like it's penetrated maybe two to three mil, like it's just on the surface there. This is the footprint of our kitchen from the other side. Now we're facing the sun. We have room for a nice patio out front and more gardens down below. You can see from after the drip test, we're really just computing the erodibility index. And that's what this table is from one of the standards books. Chalice's best brick got an erodibility index of two. Mine got an erodibility index of three. So the erodibility index is used by another set of tables and in one of the other books and that basically helps determine the need for your eaves, how big they have to be, to how much protection you need. And you notice the far left column has um, those letters are what your wind zone is, whether you're really high wind zone or low wind zone or a medium wind zone. Um, so of course, you know, driving rain, there's a, you can um, see the relationship between driving rain in a high wind zone and, you know, the output of your drip test. So it's, it's kind of common sense. You can obviously, so Chalice's brick will need fewer eaves. We're in like the medium wind zone. I think when we add more trees, we might be to the low end of the wind zone as our trees grow up to the east and the west and we're protected from the high winds from the south. You can increase your erodibility index by adding cement or lime to your earth mix. We're going to limit our use of cement to the footers, partly because of the challenge, that's half the fun, and partly because our motto here, one of our mottos here at Tattoo Gardens is to not hurt ourselves or others. I hope this helps. Good luck making your bricks.